is the only developed country in the world with a rising rate of third world diseases. Health experts and welfare groups blame the rise on increasing poverty and a demanding action from the government. But Kaitai GP Dr Lance O'Sullivan isn't waiting for politicians to act. He's on a mission. This is a very different after-hours house call for Kai Tire GP, Dr. Lance O'Sullivan. Hey, I've come back to talk to you about our Kainga Auto program. It's a type of preventive medicine. You can see quite a bit of draft coming in, which yeah. makes a cold home. Yeah. Dr. O'Sullivan's uh, checking up on patient Kuda Harris and diagnosing the health of her grandparents' home. She shares with her adult children and mukapuna. You know there's a free program the government pays so that you can actually get free insulation into your home if it's an old home like this. But insulation won't stop the cold, moist air coming through the numerous holes and plastic covered windows everywhere in this house. The real concern that there's a little child who has asthma that sleeps in a room with holes that go right through to the outside. It's clear this is a very neglected and unhealthy home which Dr O'Sullivan explains to Kuda could be causing respiratory problems for the babies living here. Do you smoke quite a, quite a bit? And my mokos are here, Rob. We don't even smoke in the house. We just, yeah, yeah outside. Kuda says the house repairs are too expensive, including the dangerous leaking hot water cylinder, which has been broken for over a year. Part of the program that I'm trying to get together, the project for our community, is to ask for people in our community to donate time and materials to help make homes like yours healthier. Most New Zealanders mm. will think Kura and her whanau don't deserve to be helped. Yep. Fair comment. Some people will think like that. And it's a way of thinking that's perpetuated over time, resulting in the same old things staying the same, which is kids getting sick when they could be prevented. You know, we've got to stop judging these people that we think are lazy and just not prepared to help themselves. I want my grandchildren with me, so I know that I am looking after them and they're mm. going to be mm. warm and happy and healthy. Yeah. I don't think it's fair that some children in this country can enjoy a quality home and a warm and safe home and a healthy upbringing and others can't. So why is a GP trying to fix his patients' homes? Dr O'Sullivan says you just need to spend some time with him in his clinic and in his town, Kaitaia, to understand why. I'm an expensive plaster. I'm a very expensive plaster and I'm, I think, ineffective. For the past two decades, New Zealand's children have suffered from a continuing rise in preventable respiratory, skin and gastro infections, and it's frustrating health specialists across the country, including Dr O'Sullivan. The big issue is it's falling disproportionately on a, on a section of our society. You know, it's poor brown kids. If you look at asthma, if you look at rheumatic fever, you look at skin infections. A lot of brown kids in New Zealand are getting these preventable diseases. So preventable diseases are acceptable if you're a brown child, but actually they become unacceptable if you're a, a non-brown child in New Zealand. There's, there's some major inequalities going on. This serious health inequality has been blamed on increasing poverty in New Zealand and is acutely felt in Kaitaia. It's where Dr O'Sullivan and his wife Tracy and their seven children call home. Our kids are on in a minute if you want to go in and watch. What time is it? We caught up with the O'Sullivan family helping out at their children's school Te Rangia Niwa Niwa during their regional Kapahaka festival. I'm looking at those children that are up on stage and thinking, how many of those children are going to end up with diseases that are preventable, that are going to impact on their potential to reach you know, the, the lofty heights of success? Two recent highly publicised studies link the rise of New Zealand's third world diseases to families not accessing or having access to proper medical care, increasing poverty, damp, overcrowded, cold homes. 
better access to seeing a doctor may stop the disease progressing. But if you take one step back, better housing, quality housing may prevent that infection starting in the first place. Both studies confirmed poor kids, Māori and Pacifica children are twice as likely to be hospitalised with serious infectious diseases. It pains me to, to think that just by virtue of the fact that these kids are poor, born brown, indigenous kids, they're going to get a second-rate chance at life. So, so who's your nurse giving you your injections? We joined Dr O'Sullivan on another after-hours house call. Patient Michael Paraha is paying a high price for our failure to stop preventable diseases. I might die. Mm, yeah. Um, something might get wrong or something. I don't know. Michael needs a heart operation because it was damaged from untreated rheumatic fever, a preventable illness which can develop from a sore throat infected by Streptococcus bacteria. Hard to hear, for anyone to hear, a um, 12 year old talking about you know, the potential for you know, dying. I'm confident that risk is low, but why should he be in this situation? There were 19 notified cases of rheumatic fever last year in Northland. It's the highest rate since 1986, and 95% of patients are Māori. Since Michael became sick, his whānau has learned a healthy home means healthy kids. Yeah. Families need to um, to have healthy homes. I don't know a lot of families out there are on the breadline. Um, and that's why they just have enough, I think, to feed their children and pay for a home that, that they live in and the children's health suffer. They've now invested in a ventilation system and received free insulation for their home. Our children are, are, are gifts and we need to protect them, look after them as best we can. Health specialists and welfare groups are demanding action from the government to stop the rise of New Zealand's third world diseases. But Dr O'Sullivan isn't waiting for the authorities to act. If we've got three homes in Kaitaia that we can identify that need immediate um, work and improvements to make that home healthy, three in a year, that's my goal. Some would say, Dr O'Sullivan, it's not your job to fix people's homes. Hey, it's not going to solve the, the woes of Kaitaia or of the country and the vulnerable children across the country, but I, hey, it's a start, OK? It's not what I went to medical school for. Um, you know, I'm not, I'm not trained in how to canvas for sponsorship and donations from people, but we'll see how we go. And then at least I can say to people, hey, we made, we made an attempt, we, we did something, you know? We're not just going to sit on our hands and say it's government or someone else's responsibility, because these kids will still suffer. Still, one question remains for Dr O'Sullivan. Why haven't we stopped the suffering of Māori children from preventable, sometimes fatal, infectious diseases? The answer I always have to that question why is, you know, is it just because we're not valued? Is it? Is it because we are poor brown folks that don't vote? And, um, and quite easily marginalised by the majority of people in society and quite easily dismissed as lazy, unhealthy and just naturally bad. The answer to the why question, I think it's complex and I'd like to know the answer. <laughs>